Hi, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. Today's instructional video will cover the basics of writing scans. Here are the topics in the timeline for today. First, we're going to show you how to work with clauses, and then we'll show you how easy it is to join these clauses with AND, OR, OR. Then we'll show you how to narrow your scan universe. Then we'll show you some examples on writing technical conditions and signals. We'll show you how easy it is to add comments to your scans. And then we'll go over sorting your results with the rank by clause. Working with clauses. A scan can be divided into a series of scan clauses. And each of these clauses gives the scan engine instructions on how to test for a particular technical requirement. So a clause has two expressions, and these expressions are compared to each other using a comparison operator. So here we have three clauses as examples. We have two expressions here, type and stock are the expressions, and the comparison operator is is, so type is stock. Next, we have close and 10 as the expressions, and greater than as the comparative operator. Now, if you look at these two, you notice that they are enclosed with square brackets, and that's very important. You must close all of your clauses with square brackets. And then the last clause shows that we want the 50-day simple moving average of the close to be greater than the 200-day simple moving average of the close. And again, that is enclosed by brackets. In order to stay organized, it is recommended that you put one clause on each line. Now, in this example, I've got a space in between each clauses. And if you run out of room on your scan, if you go down to the right-hand corner, you can click on that corner and drag and drop to open up the scan criteria box. Joining clauses. Each clause submits a question to the scan engine and the scan engine answers with true or false. So we have three clauses here, and we need to join these. And I'm going to join these with AND. And when you join clauses with AND, that means all three must be true. So basically, is the type of symbol a stock? If that's true, then you only get stocks. The second question is, is the close above 10? If that's true, you only get stocks and stocks that have closed above 10. The third question is, is the 50-day moving average above the 200-day moving average? And if that is true, you only get stocks, the close is above 10, and the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average. I've added another clause to this scan, and MACD line crosses above zero. But I'm going to add two more clauses joined with OR to this clause, and I want to show you how I'm going to separate them. First, I'm going to move this clause down. And then I'm going to add my other two clauses. So we have MACD crossing above zero, or rate of change crossing above zero, or Chaikin money flow crossing above zero. So I want one of these three criteria to be true in order for the stock to meet the scan criteria and appear in the results. Now it's very important when you have clauses that are joined with an OR that you close the entire group off with brackets. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the MACD clause, add a bracket, go to the end of the Chike and Money Flow clause, and add another bracket. So basically I have these three must criteria at the top, and I have these three OR criteria at the bottom. So AND one of these three must be true. Narrowing the universe. It's important when you're writing a scan that you narrow your universe at the top of your scan first because that will make it run faster and more efficient. We have over 10,000 symbols in our database here at Stock Charts, and you don't want to be scanning all 10,000 of those. So you can whittle it down at the top. For instance, in this example, I've whittled it down to just U.S. stocks, stocks that are above $10 stocks that have average volume of 100,000 shares per day, and stocks in an uptrend. And even when you, when you run this scan, you can see you still have over 999 results. So if I go back and I add a zero here, and I require volume to be above 1 million, and then I rerun this scan, you can see the results will be less than 1,000. We have 786 possible stocks. 
and then you can set your other criteria such as MACD crossing above zero. You can also narrow your scannable universe by going down to the scan components section and at the bottom under indexes and ETFs you can insert an index S&P 500, S&P 400, S&P 600. And what I've done here up at the top is I have group is S&P 500 or group is S&P 400 or group is S&P 600. And you can see I have three clauses with the or joining these clauses. And so I've closed them off at the end and at the beginning. So this is my universe. And then I've added the 50 day is above the 200 day and my signal is the MACD line crosses above zero. Technical conditions and signals. Here is a simple scan with seven clauses and these seven clauses can be divided into three groups. And I think you should consider these three groups when you're writing scans. The first group is setting the universe. I'm only looking for stocks in the S&P 500, 400, or 600. The second two clauses are setting the general conditions I'm looking for in these stocks. I want the 50-day to be above the 200-day moving average. And I want the 200-day moving average of volume to be above 100,000 shares. The third grouping is what I would call the actual technical signal. I'm looking for the MACD line to cross above zero, and I'm looking for Chike and Money Flow to cross above zero. Both of these signals must be met. Adding comments. You can easily add comments to any clause by preceding those comments with two forward slashes. So in this example, I will add two forward slashes, and then I will put a comment in universe is 1500 stocks. You could also add comments to your conditions and to your signals. Sorting results with rank by. You can use the rank by clause to sort your results by a particular value. For instance, if you're only interested in stocks with the highest volume, you could add rank by at the bottom and I'll rank by the 200 day SMA of volume. And you can see I've added a comment there to describe that. Now it's important, rank by has to be the very last line and you're only allowed to rank by one particular indicator. Here are the scam results for that particular scan and you see the right hand column would be your rank by column and the stocks with the highest volume are at the top and the stocks with the lowest volume at the bottom. And that concludes this instructional video on writing scans, the basics. Be sure to check out our other instructional videos and thanks very much for tuning in. Music